Hey, welcome back to the regularly scheduled programming. You know, this content and stuff that I'm creating is very important and educational for all people of all backgrounds, all ages. We are a completely socialist, like, sort of, you know, it's all for the people type of programming. And, you know, we have your best interest in mind, so thank you because it is because of viewers like you how we are able to continue to make this extremely important educational content for our community. Thank you. this story I was going to tell you. Um, I always got stories. How do I got stories? I'm one of those people I was born that's called a storyteller. I tell stories. Some of these people turn into novelists. Some of them go to school and become lawyers and invent laws and narratives that didn't exist and win court cases for people who are more powerful than you that own businesses. These are all storytellers in our modern world. I'm a different kind of storyteller. I just tell you stories about my life. I exaggerate for certain uh, comedic effect, but it's all pretty much true. So, I see a Cheeto off the floor. Um, yeah, I remember I, met, I remember the first time I made somebody laugh. I was in third grade, and you know, we had a show and tell contest. You could bring in shit, you could talk about it. So what I did, as I was a weird kid, I had all these, like, alligator heads and, like, fucking dead shit and stuff. I brought it up into the school, right? And so, like, I assumed a character. I was, like, watching, like, Steve Irwin, you know, Crocodile Hunter. That was my inspiration. The way that he acted and she's like, oh, crikey, oh, shit. Oh. I'm just like, bro, this guy is fucking funny as fuck. So, like, I was sitting there and I'm like, hey, this is, like, a crocodile head. And I started acting like it was attacking me and shit. All the fucking kids in the class started laughing, dude. I was like the, like, weird-ass kid. Like, I didn't say shit, but when I said shit, it was like I had, like, thought about what I was doing. And everyone loved it so much. The next day when we did another uh, show and tell thing, um, they made, they asked for an encore. So literally, as a third grader, even though I just improv this shit, I like, pulled it out of my ass. I basically did the same fucking skit again, and everyone laughed. And my teacher was like, yo, like, what the fuck is up with this kid? And I was just, like, reading Greek mythology and shit, and now I'm eating Cheetos, bro. But that's the first time I realized I could tell stories and make people laugh. It's not because I did all these drugs and shit. It's not because I'm crazy. like being raised by a used car dealer. I don't know, bro. I got even more swag. Oh, I'm probably going to get cancer from all this type of film shit on me, bro. That or the Cheetos.
if I hide underneath all this money, um, nothing bad will happen to me. Ugh. I visited Maine once. I'm pretty much bummed all around this fucking country. I don't really think much of it at this point. Ohio's where I find myself. I think it's the coolest here. <laughs> That's where I fit in the most. But Maine? I just call it Stephen King world, man. It's like foggy over there. Everyone's fucking rich. And they're just like, oh, Stephen King. I'm going to go in the woods like Henry David Thoreau. Fuck all this shit, bro. I'm like, all right. I'd rather walk around the rusty-ass streets, man. Like, you know, dilapidated houses and shit. Listen to some fucking punk music. I don't need no Stephen King upper-class morose. I mean, I respect it, dude. Hey, yo, Stephen King, shout out. You want to chill? Um, but yeah, Maine, people are on that Henry, Henry David Thoreau shit, they're like, I'm gonna build my own cabin, I'm gonna, I'm done with this, I'm done with these systems, everything is just to tax you, it's just stupid, I'm done, going to the cabins, going to the cabins, you know, and then they get connected with trees and shit, and it makes them feel better about being human, but guess what? You're still a human, bro. I looked you up on Wikipedia. A human is a global super predator. That's what it is, bro. You can't not be that. You might be in the cabin, but guess what? You chopped down them fucking trees that are older than you to build that cabin, bro. Why didn't you just go live under a rock? That would have been better, bro. But hey, what do I know, bro? I'm just chilling and day. to tell you bro i think i had an ego death i'm like bro you seen these images of me maybe me too bro
see, Gen Z will never truly understand what it actually sounded like to connect to the internet. You know, that's what it's about, man. Bro, I was playing Star Fox on Super Nintendo and that shit was so glitched out, I didn't know what the fuck was going on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mortal Kombat came out, bro, that shit was in front of the Supreme Court. They're all like, hey, man, we gotta invent rating systems to make sure kids don't play this, bro. Like, you created something we didn't even think could happen, bro. This Mortal Kombat shit, you gotta calm down with this shit, bro. Mortal Kombat is dangerous. That is dangerous for the kids. If they play these games where you're ripping people's spines out and fucking all that, no. That's going to make them not learn what 2 plus 2 is, bro. You got to quit on that. So then I'm going to Yeah, this is basically my casting call. I'm 31 years old. My partner's anger. I don't really know what else is going on, bro. Like, if you want me on your show, here you go. I can take direction and shit like that. Put me on your show, man. You might be surprised at uh, some stuff that might come out of me, you know? I'm uh, not addicted to any drugs. And, um, hey, man, you're already watching what I do. <clears throat> I'm on Instagram too much, bro. It's turned me into a sort of comedian that's, uh, hold on, someone's texting me. Uh, yeah, anyway, I like vests and stuff, like I said, because, you know, check this out. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? out of my studio you've already been causing too much of a ruckus causing too much of a problem and you know that we're trying to turn this into a fucking uh uh vintage nike exclusive pop-up with uh uh arson chicken wings and you know that what you're doing is fucking up our shit okay so take this 20 dollar bill okay and nothing happened bro you're causing problems for us okay all right thanks So the thing I was going to do, I'm kind of feeling it now, uh, I'll read some original poetry now, okay? Oh, no! Fuck that shit! No! Fuck that shit! Fuck that shit! I don't want to hear no goddamn poetry. Shit. That's for, that is... That's elitist things for, you know, it's a privilege if you can even read. We don't want none of that shit up in here. You start talking about Chris Rock again. Shut, stop with that. Yeah, I'm not going to read that one. There's probably something I could read. Let's see here. <clears throat> too many, too many words. 
It's funny when you think about words, because it's like, I only know how to speak English, and that's barely. But it's like, other languages you can express different things we don't even have access to, and I'm stuck. I'm stuck in this language I didn't choose. Someone taught me these things. I'm stuck in my ability to express myself. That's why I have to do these other things so I can get another effect out. Words, words. That's why sometimes when people say something, I just say word. Word. <clears throat> Vibes. Let's see, what's this? What did I write? Vibes. Yep. What was that guy's uh, name? Uh, talking about sports, right? Chicago Bulls, 1994. Alright. I'm eating the chicken wing, right? What was it? Um, he was the fashion one. He was the one that I would have liked, right? He would be on my vibe. Uh, what was his name? Oh, shit. He had the multicolored hair. I mean, he went on Oprah. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. I wrote this book ten years ago called These Words Were Inspired by Going to Walmart on the 4th of July. Uh, watching the 4th of July at Walmart was horrible for me. Um, I do remember that. But that was a long time ago now. Things have changed. I feel more people are accepting me. I don't know how to feel about that. I feel alienated, disturbed, alone, irrational. I understand, but I'm trying to get through all this wave after wave. I need to finish writing this book. I could write all day tomorrow when I wake up, which is Christmas. Wave after wave. I was going to drink all day or smoke marijuana. Wave after wave. But I've been doing that enough lately. Writing would be a nice drunk. It's been a while since I got drunk on words. Writing them here. I don't like to force the words. I mean, if I don't write for three months, it's fine. Made some friends at work. Had a snowball fight. Always seem to push them away no matter what I do. I go from hating existence to loving every poetic small gesticulation a person makes during speech or a small crease in their face as their emotion swiftly comes to light wave after wave. So many questions, so many mirrors, so much trash, I'm trash rich. Selling dumpster dives in LA. I'm looking at myself in the mirror wave. After wave. Alone I'm working because all these words and all these pages. I hit the Mega Million Lotto. Is art real? Is art real? Is this art? Is this art? Is art real? Is art real? Is this art? Is this art? I do feel a lot better wearing this. This is like more me and my own. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this um, <clears throat> program. And, uh, you know, got some original poetry in there. Got some, uh, you know, Cheeto dust on your fingers. Got some Chris Rock commentary. Got some uh, live drink and beer action and a fashion show to boot. Don't really know what more you could ask for than that. Thank you.